All right, um, before we jump into the build order, uh, I just want to get a few things out of the way. Um, number one, this beginning of the build order is, is, is really difficult. So um, you're going to have to micro villagers really well. You're going to have to micro sheep, which is annoying. Um, you're going to have to be microing your scout uh, constantly all over the map looking for sheep. Uh, sheep are really important for this build. And um, also your imperial official. Uh, so what I recommend is watching this video, uh, memorizing the build order or writing it down or whatever, and going into a skirmish against bots and practicing it 10 to 15 times before you try it out in a quick match because uh, it's really easy to forget something small, something minor. It's going to really hurt this particular play style because, I mean, it relies entirely on a fast age. You're, you're going to have no military till six minutes. Lots of civs can throw out, you know, a, a decent mass before six minutes. Like, uh, you're going to be potentially harassed by royal knights before six minutes. Like, uh, this, I mean, you, these are just going to be things you're going to have to deal with as you're, as you're, if you try this strategy. Um, but the upside is you're going to have the tech advantage. You're going to have the armor advantage. Um, uh, you're going to have, I mean, you're going to have lancers against, let's say you're fighting the English. You're going to have lancers just not giving a shit about longbows, just running them over. So um, I really recommend this against slow sieves like uh, Delhi or sieves that can't get um, sieves that can't get um, rams out really really early rams are really scary uh, uh, sieves that don't typically like to mass early I, I wouldn't try this very often against the Mongols unless you know that they're looking to trade boom or whatever um, I don't know that I would try this against the Abbasid because they can just build rams. I mean, immediately they can they can build rams. I think in the Dark Age, if not 100% in the Feudal Age, without a blacksmith, without the siege upgrade. So, um, not fun to go against. You're gonna you're gonna have to build a tower or something uh, with this build to while you mass. Um, in order to stay alive. So rams just absolutely roll over this. If they can get rams out in your base five minutes, 30 seconds, you're gonna be in trouble. So definitely you're, you're, you're gonna to wanna to use your scout to scout out your opponent, make sure this build is gonna work uh, in the game. And uh, yeah, basically, um, very micro intensive. You want to you want to practice before you go into quick game, um, and uh, don't. This isn't a one strategy. You know, wins every game or whatever. This isn't this isn't the solution to everything. This is just one niche build order that can be really really useful against royal knights. You know, you need crossbows against royal knights um, or longbows. You need high armor. China gets no armor in the feudal age, so lancers, men at arms, or palace guard in this case, um, really good. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the build order. First thing you're gonna notice that I'm gonna do is put all my vills onto this sheep right here, send my scout around to collect the closest sheep, and start training a villager and an imperial official. Now, why the imperial official? Um, because I mean the Imperial official is basically the key to this to this extremely fast castle. Um, because it gives you it, it, it makes resources out of thin air. Um, and that's a unique thing that China has that is really, really helpful with its age up time. Um, okay, so after the very first drop off all these bills are going to immediately run over to the mill that this this first villager that you've spawned is um, is building. He's also going to build a house. 
They're gonna go on the sheep. Your scout's gonna immediately look for more vills. And what's really important next is that you use your imperial official to supervise this mill so that this first drop off from all from all the vills gets the resource bonus from the from the supervision. Uh, ex that's extremely important. Um, and you're gonna want to be micring this this guy every every time that this has ideally every time that this mill has 20 tax gold you're gonna want to bring this guy back and have him return the tax gold you're you're, you're also gonna want to turn off automatic tax collection because it's annoying as hell um, constantly is like bugging out and and making your official stop super supervising so it's really annoying um, yeah, so you want you want to constantly be checking this mill, make sure if it's got tax gold or 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 and the the collection is off cooldown, then you want to be collecting and returning to the to the TC. Uh, it's going to change later because once you get to a certain amount of villagers, it's not worth the resources to return this guy. It's what you, you're going to need the food instead, not the gold. But in the beginning, since even let's say we missed all these guys turning in, that's seven times two, two, two extra resources per villager. Seven times two extra resources um, is less than 20, less than 20 gold. That's just, it's just as simple as that. The time, you're, you're, you're being efficient with your Imperial official if you're dropping off more resources than you would be getting from the supervision. Um, so yeah, in, in, in the meantime, I'm sending my scouter on the map. This is, you can see, even in this build, even in, even in this 6 minute, 10, 10 second build, um, I make mistakes. I, I, this, this time can be faster. So this time can even be optimized. So, so it's not even 6 minutes, 10 seconds. Honestly, the fastest po possible time, fast castle with China is more like, 555 or something. I don't even know. I, I've been trying to shave off seconds to, to put this video out for you guys. Um, I started with 6 minutes 30 and worked my way down to 610, but but even still, I'm nowhere near the best, <laughs> no, nowhere close the best micro that, that, that um, could be achieved for this build. Um, someone like Viper or Kazva or Mido to name a few names, would would definitely using this build order even be faster. So um, basically, you just want to send your scouter on the map. You want him to be looking for sheep. I put an AI um, against me in this game just so that he would collect some sheep. It would it would be more realistic to an actual game. I didn't want to be able to collect every single sheep. I feel like that didn't make sense for the build order because it's not not realistic. Um, so I just put an intermediate who, you know, I knew was going to go out on the map, collect sheep, whatever. Um, yeah, so um, one thing I forgot to mention, um, let's rewind, um, or not rerun, but pause and, and talk about it a little bit. Um, your first villager after... After the Imperial official trained, your first villager trained after the Imperial official is going to go to the tree line, build a lumber camp, and immediately start chopping wood. And um, while he's doing that, after, after that, after you've trained him, after he's built, whatever, he's going to start chopping wood, start turning in resources, you're gonna set your rally point back to the sheep, and you're gonna keep training, and, and you're gonna keep training uh, until you get to 11. And by the time this this reaches 11, you are gonna to want to switch over to gold because this villager will have gathered 50 wood. Um, and this villager right here is gonna use is 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 gonna provide the wood 
for the 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 next villager that comes out of this TC after the after the um uh eleventh villager has has gone onto sheep. She's gonna provide the villager the first villager that comes out onto the gold mine with the resources needed to build a mining camp, obviously. Um and Depending on map generation, I will point out, depending on map generation, he may not have, this villager may not have collected 50 wood for the mining camp by the time this villager pops out of the TC. But it is 100% guaranteed, unless you made some extreme, you, you forgot to send this villager over here um, at the proper time, or you may be on Black Forest, where the wood line is, you know, extremely far away from the TC. Um, uh, this this villager will be able to place a mining camp either before he arrives at the gold mine or after he has completed 10. After he is ready to turn in his resources. 100% of the time. Uh, he, he will always have the wood necessary to build a mining camp on top of the gold mine by the time he's, at least by the time he's gathered 10, um, 10 gold. So the main reason is we want to be avoiding these walking seconds. These walking seconds back, uh, let's say he, he didn't have the gold for, he didn't have the wood for a mining camp. He's got to walk all the way back to the TC. That's wasting valuable, valuable villager seconds. He could be gathering resources, but instead he's got to walk all the way back home, the walk of shame. He's got to walk all the way back home and back to his gold mine. So we want to be avoiding those at all, at all costs. And this villager is going to provide us with the wood we need to um, to build the mining camp and later build another house um, to avoid population cap. Um, and if you if you caught it just then, I manually brought my uh, imperial official off of this mill, collected the gold from the tax gold, and brought him back to uh, drop off this gold at the at the TC. It's extremely important to keep an eye on this mill, keep an eye, constantly be clicking this imperial official, hovering over to see if this icon will appear. This icon means, now, now it's not functioning because it's recording, um, the, the mill is actually Put on cooldown at the, at the moment. Um, tax cooldown. Uh, so this imperial official can't gather the tax gold from it this very second. But um, but if you hover over the building with your tax with your imperial official, it will correctly display whether you can collect the tax gold from it or not. And you you've got to be doing this constantly in order to get the gold necessary to age up at 6 minutes 10 seconds. Um, and speaking of Imperial officials, the 17th population um, is going to be the 17th or the 18th unit trained, um, the, the, the unit that goes from 17 to 18 pop is going to be a second Imperial official. He's going to be, mi he's going to be supervising this uh, mining camp. He's going to be um, producing gold out of thin air and waiting for this to reach 20. Waiting for this to reach 20 so that he is as as efficient as possible. You're gonna this this is this is pretty micro intensive. Remember this is this is not uh, automatic tax collection. You need to be microing these guys to peak performance in order to get this build uh, the amount of gold that you need. Um, to age up at six minutes. Um, again, I just want to point out. I want to. I want to talk about this Barbican placement just for a moment. Uh, it's pretty dog shit. Honestly, this. Th I really should have brought this Barbican placement out at least uh, a villager out and place it right here, which is still a suboptimal position. Um, uh, I really. I don't even know what happened here. Uh, pretty pretty terrible placement, but it's it's an AI, so I'm not worried about it. But in your games, you're gonna want to. I mean, you're gonna want to. 
I, I did it to age up just as fast, as fast as possible. I just threw it down in a random random place near my gold so that my villagers could garrison and it was close to my gold mine so my villager didn't have to walk. But ideally you want to be placing this in a better position uh, in a real match. Um, oftentimes close to your gold. Uh, sometimes you can bring this villager off of wood for just for a moment to build this to, to age up to the to the feudal age. Um, most of the time you don't want to bring uh, a villager off of food just because of how food intensive this build is. However, because you're also going to want to be training uh, an, another Imperial official soon. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. But um, this build is very food intensive, so I, I tend to not bring these guys off of food. But if you know that your opponent is going to be attacking your food bills, or if this mill is, for whatever reason, the map generated, this mill is further away, and you, you feel your villagers are in danger, you can bring the Barbican in the Sun, you can you can have one of your one of your um, villagers come off of food and age to the Barbican in the Sun uh, over here, protecting this hunt, maybe. Um, ideally, you, you want to have it protecting one of these two groups, so that they can garrison, they don't get killed by Royal Knights, your your imperial official can also garrison because um, he's a very expensive unit. You want to you want to protect him. Um, so yeah, basically, pretty pretty shitty Barbican placement. Don't don't follow my example in this regard. Um, try to have a, a a better placement. And um, yeah, let's continue. Um, as soon as this guy, also, he's going to return to gold, of course. And all of these villagers are going to continue going to gold. As you can see, I, I've already macroed very, very close to... As soon as I hit 2, I'm almost ready to go up to age 3, to the castle age. Um, and remember, constantly be microing these Imperial officials. It's extremely important. Um, uh, otherwise, let's say I, I didn't turn in just then. I would not be able to age up at six minutes, nine seconds even. Six minute, nine seconds. You could see the, the icon appeared before the t six minutes, ten seconds. Uh, so I cashed in over here while he was supervising, very important, while he's supervising to get the extra uh, gold. And I'm going to bring these villagers off gold to... All of them are, go are going to advance to the castle. All of them are going to be building the landmark. Um, it's ex extremely important. Remember, your opponent is probably going to age up to feudal, you know, around five minutes. Faster times could even be four minutes, 30 seconds. So he's going to be massing. He's going to have a military building, you know. He's going to he's gonna start massing. He's going to be scouting you out. He's going to find out you're going castle. And he's going to say, I want to punish this. So you got to get to castle fast. You can throw out a nest of bees. You can do, you can, um, you know, what I like to do with castle is I like to mass crossbows. Uh, I like to bring all of these villagers off, or not all of them, but, but most of them off of the landmark once it's done onto wood so I can get an archery range out quickly and a barracks. And then I bring another Imperial official and... I immediately supervise the archery range and just start pumping out crossbows. You can also, of course, go lancers. Um, the main thing is you want to be building a high armor unit. I mean, that's the whole point of uh, of or a high armor unit or a, or a or a high damage unit like a crossbow, because this build is a counter to the high armor units the advanced units that your opponent gets early into the game, or um, I think this also works very well against English because you can build lancers with high armor that don't give a shit about the longbows. You know, They will hunt the longbows down, tank you know, volley after volley, and just cut all the longbows down. Um, so ideally, you want to be building 
Lancers, crossbows. Also, Nesta Bees is really good against the English, um, even though Nesta Bees is typically a pretty shit unit. Uh, since the... Since the... Nerf. I mean, basically the only Civ that got nerfed during the... During the beta, and it's just, I mean, the Nesta Beast got nursed into Oblivion. It's just a shitty Manganel now, which is really disappointing. Um, but it still performs well against Longbows. Uh, that's another reason why I, I like to use this build against the English. Um, and any infantry-heavy Civ in general. Uh, Civs that don't get to your Nesta Beast quickly, um, or when they get to it, can't do any damage, like... Longbows, for example, can't really do any damage to Nesta Bees, um, but Nesta Bees do quite a lot of damage to the Longbows. Um, yeah, so I like to go ar one archery range even, and, and one blacksmith. You're getting these advanced upgrades, and you, you, you want to be expanding, you want to be using the wood on this. Um, sometimes towers with the hand cannon upgrade, really good at defending... Um, these these corners, um, but you you can't really use too much wood early on and get away with it. I mean, you're gonna need you're gonna need population. You're gonna need a blacksmith. You wanna you wanna take advantage of your of your castle age by getting better upgrades. Um, uh, so ideally, you don't go for multiple. And, and, and you don't have to go for multiple military buildings because with your imperial official you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna supervise the military building and you're gonna be pumping out crossbows you're gonna be absolutely just crossbow factory you're gonna have you you can mass so quick quickly with China that's the only reason that this build can even work honestly because they're gonna be pushing with their mass soon. They could already be pushing with the mass, you know, walking across the map, going right for you. You need to get these units out as fast as you possibly can. So, if you scout out his army, definitely don't build a blacksmith. I mean, build a tower, upgrade it to the hand cannon, um, uh, start thinking defensively. But once you stop his first push, you're going to have... A tech upgrade. You're gonna have better units than he has access to. Um, you're gonna have artillery. You're gonna have a good. You're gonna. You, you can. You can. I go up this game. I go up with the um, uh, whatever it's called, Imperial, the vision one that gives you a lot of vision. Um, also gives you vision. Gives you the ability of. I think it's called the Imperial Palace. I, I totally forgot. Um, but astronomical clock tower is usually what I go up with, and um, that's to get artillery out. Even Nesta Bees is underwhelming, but Springolds with plus fifty percent health, put a put a put an Imperial official on that, and they're gonna have a hard time bringing down a Springold uh, that's doing a lot of damage, um, and. From long range, you know this is you can you can play defensively a lot of different ways, and part of getting to Castle Age is is getting to, in my opinion, China's first power spike. That's hitting the Castle Age, getting out um, buffed up artillery, and and palace guards are fast, um, good unit. Very good unit, uh, crossbows. You know, Juganus are underwhelming in the in the feudal age, in my opinion. Uh, archers and spears. It doesn't really work well against these civs with high armor. So, so I feel that China's first power spike is really into the castle age. And if you survive this first push with a well placed barbican, you know, ignore this shit. Uh, some towers. Uh, a crossbow mass or a lancer mass or whatever, whatever you decide to mass, whatever you've scouted, would counter the opponent's mass. After that first push, after you kill his first push, your opponent is scrambling. Your opponent is scrambling to get to the to the castle age. Um, 
he doesn't have a way to deal with the versatility of China in the Castle Age. You can build high armor cavalry, unlike unlike um, civs that get early knights or early men at arms. You know, civs don't get early men at arms and early knights and early gunpowder artillery. Uh, they can't compete with China in the Castle Age if they're sitting in the feudal age and they and and you know same amount of villagers they're not you 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 also want to make sure that your um if if your opponent is instead booming you know two tc boom you 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 don't even want to mass you probably want to get to work on getting a second t yourself tc yourself and going song dynasty and and, and out boom them with better economic upgrades that you have access to in the castle age but Typically, if your opponent sees you hit the castle age at six minutes, they're going to shit their pants. They're going to mass as fast as possible. They're going to bring over one big push. And if you defend this big push, you're going to have the advantage. So that's what this strategy is all about. Um, and I've gone, now I've gone rambling way too much. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Um, I'm going to be posting more content in the near future, so stay tuned. Mostly China related, sorry. But, um, uh, yeah. Uh, if y'all have any questions, definitely leave a comment, ask me about it. Um, if y'all manage to get a better time than this, definitely let me know. You know, I'm really interested in fastest possible China age up. And, uh, don't neglect China. Because they've got a lot of other different strategies. I'll I'll, I'll post um, their 2TC Song Dynasty boom in the future with a with a very specific build order. Um, their feudal age rush isn't as weak um, uh, against some civs, and you can actually make it work if you play it right. Um, and uh, stay tuned for more content like this. Uh, and and also there's gonna you know almost certainly. Because of how bad China is, I mean, been been played once in Genesis so far. So um, uh, they will they will probably get buffed in the future, and this this build will become even stronger, and and potentially shorter, a, f a faster age up time, and and potentially better units. Hopefully, the the nest of bees. Uh, nerfs are reverted um, at least to some degree I agree that it was a very strong unit in the beta but um, at least to some degree so that it doesn't miss so many shots and, and doesn't have such a little impact doesn't doesn't need to be masked so heavily in order to have impact um, so yeah don't definitely don't neglect China um, very versatile civ the Imperial officer is an extremely good unit um, uh, make sure you're learning if you if you're looking to improve your China game. Definitely, definitely don't neglect the Imperial official. Um, it's APM heavy, but it can it can do wonders truly. So, good luck out there in your quick matches. Um, let me know if you have any questions or suggestions for this build and. Subscribe for more content like this.